Hello Internet, welcome back to Matt Presents. Uh, last week I did a bug horror triple feature. Um, so let's take a look at it. The first movie I showed was Centipede Horror, which is one of the weirdest and one of the most obscure films I have ever seen. Um, and I wasn't even planning on showing it. Uh on at, at my movie nights just cause like I want you guys at home to be able to follow along and this was such an obscure movie that like I didn't want to put you through that um luckily as I said last week uh Alamo Draft House and the American Journal Film Archive have a version of this up for streaming um, it's like $4 to rent, so I would recommend you do that. Uh, it is on YouTube. You can watch it on YouTube, too, so I don't feel that bad about showing it. It's not, it's not so far off the beaten path. You can find it now, which was not really the case when I saw it. So, I first saw this film last October at Dismember the Alamo. Dismember the Alamo is a horror, a mystery horror marathon put on by Alamo Draft House every October. And last year, much like tonight, last year the theme was uh, bugs. Um, or creepy crawlers. They showed two movies about snakes and one movie about aliens but they were like slug aliens so really only two movies about actual bugs they showed centipede horror and they showed uh squirm from satan's little helper director jeff lieberman um not a movie i'm likely to show on this show maybe but it's not very good um centipede horror on the other hand was a fucking trip. And, uh... Prior to its appearance at... Uh... Dismember the Alamo last year... It was very hard to come by in the United States. It was probably pretty hard to come by in China. Uh... The American Genre Film Archive... Made a copy of this film from... The last remaining print of this film. There is one print of this film, and they made a digital version of it. So, very big thanks to the American Genre Film Archive. Great organization. We will definitely speak on them in the future. They do some great Blu-ray releases. I really hope they do a Blu-ray release of Centipede Horror. I really want a Centipede Horror Blu-ray. So they transferred it, and that was the first time they, they had showed it. That was the first time Centipede Horror had been shown. I Probably, possibly the first time it had been shown in America. At the very least, the first time it had been shown in America since, like, its release. Um, it, it did not have a VHS release in America. It had a very limited DVD release. Uh, if you saw it before like, last year, chances are you saw it on a bootleg VHS. That's That was the easiest way to watch it until, like... Honestly, until this month. Um, Because <laughs> even going to Dismember the Alamo, you would have to be in the vicinity of an Alamo draft house to go watch it. So, up until just a few weeks ago, it was pretty difficult to watch this in America. So Centipede Horror uh, is a Chinese film. It's the story of a girl who wants to go on vacation to Southeast Asia. I think they mean Taiwan. I might be wrong, but I think they mean Taiwan. They, she, she goes to Southeast Asia uh, despite her mother's protest. Her mother doesn't want her to go to Southeast Asia. But she goes anyway, uh, and her brother promises to cover for her, but while she's away in Southeast Asia, she gets 
bitten by centipedes and dies. So her brother has to also go to Southeast Asia to, you know, look after her, get her remains, go home. And while he's there, he's trying to figure out what's wrong, what happened to her. Um, weird things start happening to him. And he finds that uh, in the past, his grandfather... His grandfather was cheating on his wife, and the wife found out, and he accidentally killed both the wife and the woman he was cheating with. So to cover up his actions, he started a fire and burned down the house of the husband of the woman he was sleeping with, with his newborn child inside the house. Um, and yes, they do show you the burnt remains of the baby. Don't worry. So, uh, the guy whose house got burnt down, and whose wife and child got killed, uh, put a curse on this kid's grandfather. Um, uh, that any time the grandfather or someone in the grandfather's family came to Southeast Asia... Uh, they would be stricken with the centipede curse. Um, so the kid has to go find his own witch doctor, and he hires the witch doctor to, like, protect him from his grandfather's old enemy, who's still alive, still around, and still a practitioner of magic. That's about the whole story. It, it culminates in a big climax where the the his grandfather's enemy and the witch doctor are sort of both conducting all these spells at each other and uh <laughs> like uh the the witch doctor is using these chicken skeletons to defend the kid and then at one point uh the, the evil guy, the evil villain, uses, like, these lasers to destroy the chickens, and then he he kills the witch doctor, but then the kid, like, drops this amulet his grandfather had given him that was infused with snake venom, and he spills coffee on it, and the coffee causes uh, the snake to come out of... Uh, causes a snake to come out of the amulet, and that brings the wizard back to life. It makes no fucking sense. It's so so fucking bizarre. <laughs> it's some of the wildest shit you will ever see, man. And I... The the icing on the already absurdly weird cake is centipedes. Centipedes are the creepiest bug. Okay? And people are like, oh, spiders, spiders are so scary. Fuck spiders. I don't give a shit about spiders. Spiders aren't that scary. Centipedes, what the fuck? They have, like, a million legs. They, they just look wrong. They're, they're, like, long, and they got all these legs, and they're fucking venomous, so there's actually a legitimate reason to be scared of them. This, this is the type of movie you, like, put the brushes in the theater and brush people's legs. I would lose my shit if, if someone brushed my legs during this fucking movie, man. Ugh. That's another reason I didn't want to show it so soon. Um, extenuating circumstances, I had to come up with a triple feature real fast. But, uh... I wanted to show this with, like, my friends in the room with me so I could, like, brush up against their legs. <laughs> Be funny. And it's, it's not just that there's centipedes and centipedes everywhere. Like, really gross stuff happens with the centipedes. I won't spoil it. Watch the movie. Just watch it. Just just take my word for it. Watch this movie. It's amazing. And disgusting. <laughs> this is a Hong Kong film. Um, I don't actually know how many movies come out of China. I think most of them come out of specifically Hong Kong. But Hong Kong has a different rating system than the rest of China. China just has a censorship board. You know, 
it's it's a pass fail system. Either either the movie is appropriate for Chinese theaters or it's not. But uh, Hong Kong has a rating system kind of similar to the U.S. as they have section one, section two, and section three, and they've even split that up to like section one, section two A, section two B, and then section three. So. The section 1 is like G, section 2 is PG, section 2B would be like PG-13, and then section 3 is the R-rated movies. Like, no one under 18 is allowed into a section 3 movie. And there aren't many. Very few section 3 movies get produced, but Centipede Horror was on the, was a section 3 movie. And so... It's gained some infamy for that, because of how sort of exceedingly rare those are. As for the transfer, it's not the best, because obviously this is kind of a low-quality film, but uh, American Genre Film Archive did not take the time to update the subtitles. Um, and part of me wishes they had, and part of me is like, no, it's part of the experience that the, the subtitles are bad. But it's just white text. There's no border, it's just white text. So anytime there's a white thing in the background, you can't read what it says. Sometimes the line is so long, they don't put any line breaks in. So if a line is long enough, it will like go off the edges of the screen and you won't be able to read the whole thing. And on top of that, a lot of the translations are really awkward. I mean, there's first off, there's the Southeast Asia thing, which is weird. Like, could you be a little more specific? A little more specific, do you mean... Because Hong Kong is in Southeast Asia. Are they going to Hong Kong? Is that where they're going? Or are they going to Taiwan? Are they going to... I don't know, Korea? <laughs> what are you referring to when you say Southeast Asia? But there's also, like, really funny lines. Like, the, uh, the evil wizard, like, casts some spell and then he's just like... I am very powerful! <laughs> very funny line. Very funny line. Um, there's a character in this movie named Yi. Um, I, I made note of that. I made note of the fact that one of the characters went to named Yi. I can't remember which one. It was either the love interest or one of the women that die. After that, we looked at slugs, uh, late 80s, um, sort of, sort of gross gore fest movie. I enjoyed it. I mean, I don't want to make it sound like I didn't. Um, I would say not as good as Centipede Horror. I prefer Centipede Horror. But it was an interesting movie. It really sets the pace early because right at the beginning of the film, like the very first scene... A guy is, like, fishing with his girlfriend, and he falls into the water, and he dies. Because at, at first I thought... At first I thought he was joking. Because that's sort of the cliché for horror, right? Like, you start the, sh the you start the movie off, and there's a character who's like, Oh no, I'm gonna die, just to, like, scare another character. And then they're like, ha ha ha, that guy before, like, any threat has actually been established. It just sort of... foreshadowing, I guess, to have a, a character pretend he's gonna die, and then, oh, ha-ha, I was pulling a prank on you. But, uh, this guy actually dies. Someone dies in the first minute of this movie, so... Good... Good work on the pacing. There's, there's a specific line where, uh... The... the one of the police says, we got a new dead body down here every ten minutes. And that's that's a pretty good pace for a horror movie. A dead body every ten minutes. For a 90 minute movie, that is a pretty low body count of only about nine. Um, I think this had a body count of like 12 or 13. But um, that's good pacing, man. Good pacing. There's a scene early on where there's, there's like this drunk guy you know, stumbling around. The drunk's always the first to go. Um, he's, like, stumbling around, and he's he, like, sees the slugs coming, and he's like, Oh, no! Don't hurt me! And, like, it's, it's fucking slugs. Like, first off, who gets that freaked out at slugs? 
but secondarily, like, don't hurt me. Not really gonna help when you're talking of when you're dealing with bugs, you know. I think this would make a fairly interesting pairing with Squirm. I mentioned Squirm just a minute ago. Uh, a movie that's a movie about a bunch of killer worms. Uh, like worms are just eating people alive, which is kind of what the slugs do in this movie. And there's an interesting comparison where, uh. In Squirm, the reason the worms have become, like, evil flesh-eating worms is because there's, like, an elect a downed electric wire and it's electrocuting the ground. So it's bringing all the worms to the surface and now they're, like, angry flesh-eaters because of the electricity. Whereas on the other hand, in Slugs, they deliberately cut a power line into the Slugs and that kills a bunch of them. I don't know that there's a reason the slugs are flesh eaters. Maybe there was and I just missed it, but I think they're just flesh eating slugs. Who needs an explanation, right? And uh, like the, the sewers are infested with the slugs. So their solution is to mix up this chemical that explodes when it comes in contact with water and blow up the whole sewer system. That's how the movie ends. They blow up the sewers. And it, it causes a bunch of stuff to, uh, like, catch fire and explode around the town. I'm pretty sure, while they're showing all of the explosions, they show an explosion of a greenhouse that already exploded earlier in the movie. Um. Because, like, earlier in the movie, this guy gets, like, attacked in his greenhouse and he, like like, accidentally starts a fire that blows up the whole greenhouse. Um, and I'm pretty sure they used that footage twice. Slugs is interesting. Um, I, I don't know that I would actively recommend it, but I did get some enjoyment out of watching it. So, um, you know, if you're into that type of thing, I, it's not bad. It's not bad. Again, like, I, I say this almost every week. I am not disappointed with any of my picks so far. Um, there's only a few I actually liked. I liked Goke, I liked Videodrome, I liked Scanners. But, uh, all of the movies that I've picked that I've never seen before all end up being pretty enjoyable. Including, uh, our last film this evening, or our last film that evening one week ago, Tarantula. So I was sort of like, oh, I, I, well, I gotta put together this, uh, triple feature real fast. I teased Centipede Horror, so we'll do, like, Centipede Horror, and I, I gotta find two other bug movies to show with it. Oh, I know, like, Slugs. Slugs is on Amazon Prime been meaning to watch that and then i'm like oh i need a third bug movie what's another bug horror movie and one of the first ones i thought of was tarantula and i'm like offhand i don't know how i can get a hold of tarantula because it's not on any of the streaming services i have i couldn't find it on youtube or anything but then i'm like wait a minute i have the classic sci-fi ultimate collection which has Tarantula on it. I bought this uh, mostly for The Incredible Shrinking Man and Monolith Monsters. Those are the two big names I wanted out of this. But all of these movies look pretty interesting, except maybe Mole People. So we might be watching everything or nearly everything on this box in this box set eventually. I'll, I'll give them credit. Uh, a lot of classic sci-fi collections are like really cheap movies usually even public domain movies it's it's almost always public domain or just really cheap to get the rights to movies and that is not the case with this movie it does have a disc falling out because a piece of plastic fell off in here but that's fine it, it is, like, some decent classic sci-fi movies. 
including Tarantula. Uh, Tarantula, so far the oldest movie we've looked at. Not by that wide a margin, only about five years. Um, oldest movie we've looked at. Also the first movie we've looked at to be referenced in the song uh, Science Fiction Double Feature from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. So, I have seen... Now, I've now seen six of the eleven song... Uh, I've now seen six of the eleven movies referenced in that song. I don't think we'll ever watch all eleven. Because It Came From Outer Space was not a very good movie. So I am unlikely to show that. Um, but the other four I've seen are all very good movies. Um, King Kong, Forbidden Planet, Invisible Man, and Night of the Demon. So, all good movies, all potentially on the docket for movie nights. Tarantula is the first one we took a look at. Um, not, not my favorite, but it was fun. It was, I, I wouldn't consider it bad. It, it was, there's, there's this thing with like 50s, like horror movies where even, like, the good ones tend to feel a little like a B-movie. Like a, like a cheesy B-movie. And I think Tarantula did a good enough job being unique, standing out, being a somewhat enjoyable film. Uh, it's, a, it's a tad slow. Uh, that's the problem with all these, like, giant monster movies, is they spend so much time on the humans, and it's like, I don't care about the humans, I just want to see the tarantula destroy stuff. I will give them mad props for the special effects. The special effects look very good in this movie. Um, in a few instances, you can kind of tell it's, like, a normal-sized tarantula that they've, like, edited to make it look huge, but I don't know, compare this to like, giant Gila monster where that's just like a normal sized Gila monster walking around not really interacting with anything that would make it look giant whereas in this movie like, it legit looks like a giant spider, it looks like a giant tarantula very good work um, but specifically, there's, like, a lot of scenes inside this lab where this professor has, like, giant rats and giant guinea pigs, and they look super real. It's really well done. Uh, a scientist is experimenting with this stuff that causes animals to grow at a very rapid rate, but then a fire breaks out in the lab and a tarantula escapes... And because it has this stuff inside it, it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger until it's, like, terrorizing this small town. A um, lot of fun. A uh, lot of, uh... A bit of an obvious concept, you know. I... Hmm. I wonder if this was the first giant bug movie. It was certainly the first giant spider movie. So, there's... There's a lot of stuff that's come since that was clearly inspired by this. Um, arachnophobia, eight-legged freaks, um, ice spiders. Uh, okay, Them from 1954 predates this by a year. That one's about giant ants. Um, I liked this better than Them, I think. Um... Again, not not something I think I would actively recommend, but definitely like if you're having a, like a fun little movie night and you want to put on like classic universal monster movie, it's it's fun. It's fun enough. Um I will say last week last week in Scanners there was a character named Kim and then this week in Slugs there was a character named Kim. And I have a friend named Kim who's one of the people who will, like, hop on Discord with me and watch these movies with me. Um, and so I was, I was joking with her. I'm like, man, you got, like, these two different characters. Two weeks in a row, you got characters named Kim. There's never any characters named Matt. And wouldn't you know, there was a character named Matt in Tarantula. That's extremely rare for how 
popular a name Matt is, I can think of very few characters named Matt. Um, I mean, if you exclude Matt Damon from Team America, you got Vincent Price's character in Witchfinder General. You've got Matthew Blackheart, Monster Smasher. Um, uh, the, well, the Sheriff Matt from this movie. Um, the Delivery Boy is named Matt in uh, I Spit on Your Grave. Those are all the Matts I can think of. Those are all the characters named Matt from movies I can think of. Or Matthew, technically. Um, in most of those cases, it's Matthew, not Matt. I don't really like being called Matthew. I know it's in the theme song for my show, but I, I really don't like being called Matthew. It was to fit a it was to fit a rhythm scheme. You know, it was based on a song from G Giant Gila Monster, so I can't be that upset, but I do I I would rather be called Matt than Matthew. I'm forgetting one. What's the other Matt I'm forgetting? Uh, I'll remember it like three days from now and be like, Oh, fuck, why didn't I put that on the video? I don't know, Tarantula. Enjoyable movie. Alright, let's do this quick before my battery dies again. Last week I asked you what your favorite bug was. Or, uh, least favorite bug, I guess. I said creepiest bug. Um, someone said spiders, but that was really the only answer. I disagree. Spiders aren't that creepy. Centipedes are creepy. I think as far as bugs go, they're the creepiest. But I will say, uh, the one creature that bothers me maybe even more than centipedes are fucking crabs. Like, I, I realized recently I just really don't like crabs. There was some video of, like, crabs walking around and I'm like, ugh. Because it's like... You know, it's the weird creepy crawliness of, like, spiders or centipedes. But also they got those big old pinchers. So it's like, they're creepy crawly and they can pinch you? I don't think, uh... I don't think crabs count as bugs, but... I mean, in, uh... Constantine, there was the demon who was made out of bugs and he had a crab in him. Anyway, this week's question is, what's your favorite fake band? Because I, for one, am a huge fan of fake bands. <laughs> we, we can talk about some of my personal favorites next week. But I, I got a triple feature of musical mockumentaries. I'm going to start with the classic, the original, The Ruddles, All You Need Is Cash. Got the, the nice... Ruddles Anthology Blu-ray here. Then we're gonna watch Walk Hard, The Dewey Cox Story. Judd Apatow comedy starring John C. Riley. Um, I've heard good things about it. Very looking forward to that. And we're gonna end with one of the most underrated classics. Can it be underrated and a classic? One of the most underrated gems ever. Fear of a Black Hat. A, a parody of 90s hip-hop. So, The Ruddles, Dewey Cox, and Fear of a Black Hat. Uh, be back next week to talk about those. Until next time, I'm Matt. Have a good day.